So, yeah, today, uh, well, today, I mean, you know, uh, I'm watching this just a few hours later, so, not exactly today, as in, not tomorrow, just a few hours, anyway, yeah, I am, I am definitely now, yeah, maybe, I mean, I, so I was so, definitely before, wasn't I, but, um, I am definitely watching Kuchi Onna. Yeah, definitely. Unless a squirrel just distracted me or something. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. So scissors. Yeah. It's it's like a like a theme, isn't it? With scissors and such. Like e even in the previous one, you know, even uh, you know, it wasn't explicit, but you, you know, there was the Joker smile. Uh, you know, yeah. He's doing that. So sort of something is implied there, uh, maybe. Maybe not, I don't know. Um yeah, so Kuchi on that, yeah. Kuchi. Kuchi doesn't sound very threatening, does it? Kuchi. Yeah. Sounds like someone being tickled or something. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to Yeah, at one point with the subtitles were supposedly translating the same thing over and over. Uh, into different things. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not sure what they think they're doing when um, they do that. Because they, they obviously they obviously saying the same thing. So how could it be different things every time? Uh, I've never seen that happen before. Okay. Uh, well, as you know, uh, it's uh, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Uh, these subtitles do not seem to be. Absolutely very perfect either, but mm, a bit better than the previous ones at least. Yeah, and uh, yeah, at least there's no murders in the first three minutes, right? That, that is ridiculous. And here, here I thought one miss call was too hasty when I first watched it. You know, so it it uh, yeah yeah so some. Some movies really, really go in for uh, speed running, you know. See, now this, the beginning, yeah, is, is a good beginning, what I consider a good beginning, you know, the, the, up to the, you know, the first six minutes. All they do is say something, and they, they, they can elicit fear, certain not, not disgust using just words, which is, I think, something that is, you know, quite, uh, I wish it, I, you know, um, it happened more in horror movies. I mean, you know, in um, Dark Water, it's not necessarily just words that they use. Well, sometimes it is words, but it's also things in the shadows. Here, so far, it's words and imagination. Then there's, you know, uh, music and such. It it all adds up to create this atmosphere, and I, I think it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it, more horror movies should really do that. As opposed, to, I, I don't know if this will become explicit, you know, like you know, end up being gory or such, which it has potential to, but um, so far it hasn't. So yeah, so far it's it's, it's okay, I guess. And um, by the way, um, I know that in. Uh, some Asian countries, uh, they uh, uh, they sometimes use masks uh, casually, so you know, in the sense that it it wouldn't be too although yeah, in this in this sense, I mean, like in in this uh, auditorium here, there's only one apparently who's wearing it for some reason, so not it's not common here, but. Um, in reality, many do, due to air uh, pollution, apparently. Well, of course, with the pandemic right now, there's many countries, not just those there, that uh, have done this. Not, not, not all, but many. Um, and um, so it's a bit eerie to, to, to see this, you know, in such a context and obviously this was done uh, 13 years ago although um, two years later I suppose 
there was going to be uh, another pandemic, of course, deadly. But um, yeah, and so it's a bit eerie, you know. Now everyone in real life, if one does go, you know, outside where people wear masks, uh, everyone could be. Kochi sake, kochi sake onna. Think it would need to be a, a big mask to to, to cover, uh, you know, slip up to the ears. They said. So. Well, what's wrong with her teachers? Uh, the, so love runs deep, really. And then she wouldn't do anything. She just froze after, you, you know, she was taken away. Well, what? You know, I swear some people are sort of ineffectual. I mean, what, what's the point? You know, she's uh, just showing her all the evidence, and somehow she still insists that uh, her mother truly loves her. Truly, really? really? I mean, uh, you know. It, it, you know, it's one thing to 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 say that it's you know, sort of some sort of stereotypical thing, you know, just a cliche thing. But you, you know, with evidence, there's no way you can defeat that, you know. It's really true. And yeah, by the way, uh, Kuchi does seem to be mouth. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit uh, it's a bit difficult sometimes to you know know which words are which exactly. But uh, so I'm assuming. Sake slip. Hmm. Um. I'll, I'll need to see about that. I guess I'm. I'm guessing it has multiple meanings then. But it seems like she is. And so you know, at least uh, she's. She said. She said that when the subtitles translated it as mouth. You know. So. Must be. I guess I haven't uh, heard uh, mouth being said a lot. Uh, Overall, uh, yeah, I don't think there's uh, any, uh, you know, anime or such that begin it, uh, or, you know, have the word mouth in it. <laughs> they really haven't, I mean, there's not exactly many such things, are there, you know? But, uh, it's not exactly, I mean, it's a common word, but it's not a common in titles, so this is pretty much the first title where. Mouth is in the title, but yeah, whatever. Uh, uh, so, uh, the um, mm, around 1938, there was someone, there's someone who says, and, and unless I'm hearing incorrectly, they say panda sun, yeah, to refer to a toy. I don't think I've ever heard sun being applied to a toy before. Um, by the way, Matsuzaki looks like Makoto Shinkai, doesn't he? I mean, this this was... I, think it, I, I don't think he's an actor anyway, but... He does look like him. Except he usually has a stubble. Uh, yeah, anyway. This, this movie, though, is... Well balanced, isn't it? I mean, so far, you know, up, you know um, nearly at nearly the half an hour mark, um, way more balanced than previous nonsense I've seen. I mean, if if this was that, then they, there would have been as many kidnappings as there were minutes. No, really, balance is important. It's you know, you, you, you don't get to see gore, I mean, you know, uh, I guess, you know, through kidnappings, you know, something is implied, but, but nothing is certain, and uh, the, the only thing is the creepiness, right, based on the fact that uh, her face is disfigured, yeah, and um, that uh, is effective in itself, you know, I don't know why... Some movies really think that you know having something else or an ex, 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 something in excess is somehow the key, the magical solution to horror. I mean, it's really not. It's this this thing, you know, that, that there's this balance that's really useful to a certain something. So yeah, in a way, this is. Sort of like an antidote to the nonsense, yeah. 
this the, those those two movies that I've seen in the last few days. Well, one I've seen just literally a few hours ago. No, I don't know how. Well, obviously it's not just it's not the same people doing these movies, but um, you know, um, you, you could say you know both are Japanese horror, but. You know, so is Dark Water, and you know, it's vastly different. By the way, um, in those interviews on TV without people's heads, they're, um, uh, I don't know, I guess they could be said to be creepy just because of that fact, but uh, you know, either that or the camera, uh, camera person isn't really very well adjusted, are they? Um, you know, maybe they haven't even noticed that, uh, I mean, what's the point of having a TV interview like that anyway? Might as well just have the voice only. Yeah. But it uh, sort of works in this context, though, in terms of horror movie, I suppose. Any other movie, it would be a uh, pure comedy, but, you know, you be with the... the uh, sound in the background and such with uh, this uh, vibe because it uh, works in uh, the sense to create this atmosphere of dread so it is implied then that the uh, lit might be imaginary not sure if that is exactly what it is or the transforms or such but um seems like something yeah something is uh, uh, amiss Maybe, as my theory, anyone who wears a mask could be taken over by the essence of Ikuchiona. That, that would be something, huh? In which case, Ikuchiona could be rampant right now, globally. Wow, can you imagine that? Not only do we need to be, deal with a virus, we need to deal with a, with a, with a mythological uh, 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 Feature, yeah, with uh, a slit that seems to take a life on its own, to, to, to be to be made of something outside of it. Oh, never mind. It's, you know, sometimes but this this is this is what's uh, positive about this, right? as opposed to uh, you know some movie where so uh, you know its only focus is you know gore and disgust. No, you get. You get a sort of mystery with uh, things, events that actually spur thought. That is, that is a, a good film, you know. That is a, you know, that that makes you know uh, that really spurs movies, you know that. It transforms movies from that to a film potentially because you know not many horror movies really become horror films I mean if there is truly a difference between the two you know but, you know many horror movies just are simply you know you know they, they, they seem to think you know, as long as they have Good cinematography. I mean, some don't even bother with that. You know, S some don't. But many do not bother with. You know, an interesting plot to begin with. And that's yeah, that's very important. You know, that's that's crucial to it. And this so far has has been interesting. First half hour, pretty interesting. You know, so you know now we know that there might be shape shifting involved and such. I don't know, as I say, yeah, like, you know, as opposed to, you know, well, well uh, children can be statistics, so, yeah, it's nonsense, you know, you know and, but, but what's even more nonsense is something that focuses on disgust, you know, this doesn't, I mean, you know, it might, you know, create this uh, effort, evanescent sort of feeling of you know such 
when it comes to you know this this uh, the viewing of this uh, slit, you know, but that's not really you know, that's a condition. That's uh, so in a way it's only very evanescent. Uh, but in a way, you know, uh, it's uh, it quickly quickly disappears. You know, to think about the situation. Uh, I might be overanalyzing this a lot like this. What if though? What if? There's a lot of what ifs. <laughs> yeah, in just half an hour, and uh, it's already. I mean, if this was sci fi, then, you know, what if people with colds can be taken over? Imagine that. Uh, yeah. This sort of ties into what I've mentioned earlier, but, you know, what if, you know, a rhinovirus can be hijacked by. A supernatural entity. Oh, that would be something. But I, I haven't seen you know, sci fi as a genre, so uh, I'm assuming that's on it. Well, to be fair, that's, it would still be supernatural, I guess. So, um, yeah. Most horror films are supernatural. They don't verge too much into sci fi, but that, I guess, could still be supernatural. Well, I mean, yeah, it's supposed to be sci fi. They ended up saying, you know, uh, yeah, it could be hijacked, and here's the RNA being hijacked, and uh, we got some aliens, by the way. I don't know. Uh, you know, that, that would, I guess, you know, transform into a sci fi, but yeah. Anyway. And, um, but, you know, what got to Shinkai have it rough? You know, if that, if that was him. Uh, it's a surprise. He. Yeah, grew up to believe in some sort of uh, you know the, the possibility of ideal romance or something. That's uh, his movies always indicate. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's uh, he just looks like him. Obviously, I, I, I doubt it is him. I haven't read that he, he is an actor anyway. So, yeah. but seriously, with all this coffee. Um and masks. I mean, this uh, obviously didn't. Uh, I'm assuming didn't envision, you know, a global pandemic thirteen years later, where uh, um, coughing will be the primary symptom. It's quite uh, creepy, though. It's sort of adds an extra dimension to it. If I had seen this, you know, just a few months ago, I wouldn't have thought much of it. I mean, it's, you know, colds do exist, and so does the flu, but, yeah, COVID is much more deadly. And, uh, I mean, there are deadlier illnesses. That have a cough as a primary symptom. Well, pneumonia being one of them. Except, the, I don't think it's, well, it is an infectious disease, I suppose. Except, it's, from my understanding, it, it only, uh, inf um, it's only successful if the immune system is already too weak. So, you know, there are other. Illnesses, beginning with a cough, but they're not as infectious. That's the uh, difference. This is turning out to be sort of a nightmare fuel, though. You know, uh, I mean, you know, imagine if, if you had you know, a, a, a severe cough like that, you know? Yeah. Not only do I need to worry about being infected by some virus, uh, but I'm going to start thinking, oh my goodness. The uh, Ikuchiyonna might take over me. I think that's pretty established now. I haven't mentioned any hijacking of RNA or anything, but that's, that, that's why I suppose this remains, uh, you know, super, a supernatural horror, not sci-fi. Yes, yes. There's a slight distinction, I guess, between horror and sci-fi. Sci-fi tends to be more technical, I guess. That's the main thing, yeah. But yeah. To reiterate, a uh, movie can be powerful, even if not explicit. The underground scene 
you know, the, 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 the first time that the kidnapped uh, thing, you know, um, was quite dreadful. And yet, it didn't feel the need to show too much of even any gore at all. So, I'm assuming this, this is going to be sort of a minimalist on that front, which is always interesting. You know, I don't know why the more, the more of the, as opposed to Dark Water, which is just about, you know, the shadows, not, yeah. This, on the other hand, does have, you know, references and, you know, the topic does involve something gruesome, Inv that does involve violence. But, yeah, um, the camera always looks at it from a different angle. And I first noticed this when Mika, Mika was, um, uh, you know, when uh, her classmates wanted to see what's underneath her mask. The camera changed the angle to her back. And so the audience couldn't see right there and then, then you could see five minutes later why she had a mask. So, you know, if, if a movie doesn't need to be positive, I mean, this is all horror movies will be negative in a sense, you know, I suppose if I wanted. To be cheered up, but I just watch a comedy. And to be fair, after after this one, I think I'm going to try to do that because this though this does and this quite a lot of bread. Not discussed. There is a difference. This is truly an effective horror film. You know, of of real horror, not some stupid. Um, he, 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 you know, uh, yeah, a lot of oh, look, look how much guts I can show. So I don't know who does. I mean, you know, and um, yet I don't think there is a sequel to this, whereas there was with the those two. Um. So yeah, this. This is even more dreadful than that quarter, and yet yeah, seems like it could be minimalist in 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 the in the with regards to gore, but it does imply it. I mean, you can hear it, but not see it. See, it, it can be affected. It can very much can. I mean, if if you know um. This is an effective horror film, as much as horror goes, you know? There's no comedy in this. Uh, you know, I'm not... I, I wasn't... I didn't come here thinking that uh, that would be. The title says all. Um, but... Um, yeah, so it's... So it's... it's, it's uh, yeah, interesting. And by the way, those... Those sounds used. I mean, one can hardly call it music. It's it's like a drone, you know, like someone just having this drum beat at a very slow pace. It is so effective at building up dread, right? I mean, you know, I, you know, earlier in the previous commentary, I said that you know the piano music was wasted on that, and it was in the sense that. You know, it, it was actually some nice piano music, but piano music doesn't quite fit in with horror movies, unless unless they're um, at the left end, you know, of you know the the bass section of piano, um, you know, where you know you get you can evoke more, you know. I mean, there, there are, and in fact, I think this 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 film does have some piano music, 
it uses it though appropriately. So you know, um, uh, so it uses minor keys to indicate something negative and such. But I think what it mostly uses is these beats. Um, are quite something. Uh, I I don't know what it is about this. I'm not sure if it's if it's because there's two in quick succession, you know. Ding, ding. It's it's quite something. It's almost hypnotic, isn't it? Uh, I think if you put it in any horror movie, it will just make it more horrifying automatically. It's uh, I don't know who came up with this, but it's very effective. I mean, you know, the, when it was when this was there, while they were in the park there at night. I mean, you know, just um, I, I, let's just say I wouldn't be listening to this if I was alone at night in a park myself. You know, even if I wasn't alone, you know, I mean. To be fair, it's not much music, you know. It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't have a lot of rhythm and variation. But uh, as 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 an ambient mood setter, it's effective, right? Like nothing I've heard before. It's haunting. Yeah, it's very haunting. I suppose one could say Japanese horror is a miss. I mean. You know, you get you know franchises like One Miss Call that do focus mainly on visual gore, so you know gore that can be seen. Uh, you know, and you know, that then you know Dark Water doesn't at all have any gore at all. It, it has just mainly creepy scenes, but you know this on the head, I I haven't actually ever seen anything like it. I mean. It does have some gore, so it does have a, you know some blood. Let's just say I suppose one can differentiate between blood and gore. Maybe I mean gore tends to be more, but gore is more about action as well. I think it's more about you know actually seeing something being done, and some uh, movie makers think that somehow gore is terrifying in itself. I, you know, if it happened in real life to to you, it would be very much so, but. But you know, in a movie, it's just it's just you know, gore. No, what's most most more haunting? I mean, it's not haunting, you know. It's it that's the, the point, you know. Like this uh, drum beat, you know. If you, I'm not sure if it's a drum, it's it's just it's a beat at any rate. You know, it's not it's not gore, is it? it doesn't imply gore. It's it's just a steady beat, and yet it's haunting. So this is the thing, right? God isn't haunting, it's just uh, just colors, you know, just... Blood on its own, on the other hand, implies that something happened in the past. Uh, you, you know, it, it, it implies violence. And, but, you know, I suppose it could be said to be not gore, I mean, it is gory, I suppose, depending on how much there is, I suppose, but, but not gore in the sense that it's, it's not being done right now. I don't know if it, there is really such a differentiation, but I don't know, I'm just I'm just saying that there might be. It still remains subtle, so, so, so far, we've only listened to the slitting being done. We haven't seen it, like, you know, if, if, if this was any other conventional horror movie, it would just uh, it would readily show it, you know. I think uh, being subtle is uh, even more haunting. And uh, y you know what? I'm not sure if uh, I'm, I'm making this worse by uh, focusing on it so much by talking about it. Probably not as much. I mean, you know, I. I I've done this for many other movies before, and it has necessarily uh, intensified my feelings necessarily or anything, and may maybe you know in one direction or another. I mean, if you know, if I guess I I, I think that you know a, a, a movie isn't 
terribly well made and you know uh, that I say so and such this though this um I mean I have said that it's effective but it's I, I think I, I I wasn't I wasn't quite prepared for how effective this was I mean, I, I I haven't feared such dread since the ring, I think. I, I mean, I, I to be honest, I haven't felt this like this. It, I haven't felt this like this even with Dark Water. So you know, in a way, in a way, that was that was mild in a way. I mean, it had its own thing. It was creepy, but it didn't make you almost freak out. You need something. To, I, I don't know if, if, if you know, some filmmakers think that, oh, let's um, let's go someone to bits and that will frighten people. I be, mean, I've watched film after uh, movie after movie. Yeah, I'll make the distinction here. They're they're merely movies, really. I've watched movie after movie doing that because somehow, horror uh, horror makers, you know horror directors think that that is horror yeah. I have watched movie after movie do it that does that and I mean one gets used to it I I suppose that's 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 the thing I mean one does get used to it and this 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 does have a bit of that as well except it's not it's it's, it's not mainly on camera and I don't know if it's just that but it's seriously effective. Like y you know, I I've just went to my uh, bathroom, and um, there happened to be a pair of scissors. I, I mean, I I knew they were. It's not like you know, but in this context, and I swear, when I'm washing my hands. I am just, uh, I, you, you know what I'm getting to from this, right? I just, this, this didn't happen in the last, for the last, you know, the, the 10 horror films that I've watched, uh, yeah, 10, not 10, as I said, I, I, I've, uh, I remember feeling horrified after watching The Ring, uh, as it happened, it was the American version, which was still uh, terrifying, in my opinion. I mean, the, the whole concept is. Uh, the, the ring doesn't have much of this glory, from what I remember, either. So, that might be the crucial factor. But seriously, I, uh, this, you know, um... I've just, I've just come from watching a few hours ago, just a few hours ago, watching one of the most disgusting uh, movies that you know where they simply think, uh, the, 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 you know, they simply think, you know, let's let's kill everyone, let's yeah, everyone just cut to pieces, you know, and I barely felt a thing. I mean, what's the point? Yeah, it's in a way it is overexposure. I, it just and. You know, I mean, there's um, there's a, a few people here, and there's a, there's a few images of you know, uh, violent implications, but n not even remotely as much as there was in that one. And it's not so much that the 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 where. So I mean, it's not just you know the fact that it's it's limited. It's the fact. I think it is. The effect of it's on camera. It's implied that the Kuchiona appears behind someone spontaneously. That is so creepy. That's the, the very definition of creepy. I mean, as a horror film, this truly takes the cake. Like, you know, Dark Water was elegantly made, it was subtle. It is a very creepy film, uh, but it didn't freak me out. So, um, 
uh, e e even though it's a, it's a sibling of the ring. Uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe maybe that's because I haven't really watched another um, version before it, but no, I don't think the, uh, the first one that I watched freaked me out either. So, um, I'm just saying, I mean, a subtle thought is best, I think, no matter what, even if there are Gordian implications. Subtle is best. Of Kavla is best. It's so effective. It's unbelievable. You say. It's such a mis misconception where, where directors think that kill everyone in the most gruesome way possible. That will fight an audience. Uh, yeah, no. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You really don't need that to frighten the audience. You don't. And, uh, and yeah, it has uh, also has this sort of investigation that uh, is being done in the background. Which, you know, all... Uh, all the horror films should really have, I suppose. I mean, know that you know they shouldn't all be police procedurals or anything, but uh, you know, a um, an effective uh, element of this is, is sort of an investigation, I suppose. I mean, obviously, when it comes to kidnapping, it's more crucial, but um, the only thing that is a bit amiss, strange, you know, is the fact that uh, I mean, it's one thing to have rumors around. Floating around, but you know when uh, the mother asked uh, a child for something more, you know she knew something very specific. Uh, that's a bit uh, strange, you know, considering. I mean, uh, well, it's one thing if they, they had already been kidnapped and you know they knew the area somehow, and, but uh, you no. Know, you know, it hasn't been said that, you know, kidnapped people have escaped so far, so I'm assuming she wasn't kidnapped before. Uh, and yet, I mean, how could a child, though, know something so specific? It's one thing to, to know general rumors, I suppose, but, you know, it's not very, very obvious as, as to why a child would know that, you know, when even, even uh, the detectives didn't know anything specific, so, you, you know. But, but yeah, subtitles are strange, like, and <laughs> at this point, you know, it's, uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious that they're calling out just her name, and yet the subtitles add, are you in here? I mean, sure, maybe that's what they meant, but I mean, come on, it's, it's sort of obvious, isn't it? That, you know, anyone can hear it's, it's her name, and then, you know, there's a suffix, but I mean, yeah, yeah anyway, um, at least the subtitles aren't, you know, very poor quality, like some could be, you know. The, um, from what I remember, the, the third one, Miss Call, had horrible subtitles. Huh? Well, I finished it on. There's a bunk in here. I'm deflated. Not that I was ever thrown crazy, but you know, I, I honestly don't know. I am watching one horror movie after another, but this is this is my limit. Um, as I mentioned, it was quite effective. It was sort of a mixture, you know, um, it had a bit of um. A bit of was it was it more mis yeah the first one was call had elements of that in terms of domestic abuse as well but and obviously it, it had supernatural elements so it wasn't just you know some human serial killer and this is rooted in uh, a yokai legend i haven't read too much about it i'm going to do so but yeah yokai are supernatural entities so obviously this uh, is the case that it's uh, it's uh, you know it's something that can be transferred and such yeah, truly horrific. I mean, at the end, 
then maintain this subtlety one can say but that that's the the problem i mean it's it's a dilemma that uh, i acknowledge all uh, movie makers have as well they are obviously not not the ones who think that you know god is horrifying in and of itself you know and so god of the way to have it you know this was at least a lot of hours which is uh, well, you know, at, at least it's not throughout the whole hour and a half. Um, in a way, it had a bit more gore than, say, Audition had. No, no, I mean, Audition had some intense gore, very intense, but it, uh, it was sort of a, a minority of the. Uh, the entirety of the film, well, you know, the rest was mainly drama. This, this on the other hand, had two thirds that was a mixture. But for for two thirds, for the first hour, it it was mostly subtle. So there were implications of violence, well, besides the slaps and such. But in terms of God, it was only implied. But yeah, this is this is supernatural horror done effectively, in my opinion. Sure, in the end, it's not subtle. Uh, whereas Dark Water, for example, uh, remained subtle until the end, and it remained. You know, mostly non gory until the end. It was also supernatural, but not gory. Um, yeah, but this, well, it's it, it's its own ratio, I guess. You know, I mean, sure, in the end, directors have a choice between you know either you know go over the top with this or be sensible and moderate. And in this case, yeah, they were they were moderate for two thirds of the film. For one third, they went all out mainly, mostly. Overall, though, the entire film was quite effectively horrific. Uh, so much so, I, I, you know, I, I just I don't want to watch. You know, no matter what, the next movie will not be horror. I am tired, in a way. I think I'm good. It feels like it's some sort of wave that I go through, you know. Where, you know, <laughs> I mean, I've, it's it's so far away from half a sixpence, you know, that naive musical. I mean, to go to another such musical as such would be a bit, you know, I don't know, unless I feel like it. But the next one will be at least a plain drama, at least. You know, if not comedy, but I'll probably try comedy. At this point, I am just I'm tired. Really, I mean, I've almost feel like this that guy in the, in the basement, and it's it's all flooded in, and it's it's really tiring. Horror films can build up and mentally deplete oneself, really. And live action, in a way, can do that even more than animation. I mean, I could watch entire series with so this heavy. I don't know. It's uh, nonsense. Yeah, I mean, it's it was quite effective, as one can see. It's yeah, uh, I just. I feel like I need to rest a bit, even if I don't watch anything anymore now. Yeah, I'll probably watch uh, either way. <sighs> it's yeah, it's it's it was powerful. What can I say? Uh, um, the implications were strong and uh, tiring. And yeah.
goodbye. So I am going to try to go to yeah. Um, I know it's, uh, I should probably take a break from all these horror movies, but um, hmm, that's a thing, isn't it? I just keep uh, going back to them, unfortunately. Or for I, I, I whatever I thought they are still movies, aren't they? I mean, you know, they uh, there's something on there, and um. I cannot believe it has a sequel. And not only does it have a sequel, it has two. Actually, not a sequel, a prequel, apparently. I mean, it's still a sequel in the sense of, uh, it, 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 you know, it coming after the original. Yeah, uh, I'm referring to uh, Kuchi Sakaona. Uh, I don't know why I'm going to watch this again, but I mean, my, 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 my as well, no, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying, right? Apparently, so um, on this page, at least there is only one other movie, but in reality, there is apparently something else as well that isn't available here. So I guess if I ever wanted to watch, I need to dig uh, dig deeper than this, I suppose. So this is about. Gifu, which apparently was, did have some sort of scare in real life. I think it was Gifu. Um, because, uh, he, he, you know, it's a, it's a real legend. Uh, if if um, real legends make any sort of sense in terms of, you know, I mean, it's still a legend, but it's, it, it is real legend. So it's not invented for the movies. It's, it's a legend taken from real life instead of simply invented. Uh, you know, crafted out of nothing. Um, and in real life, they really did. Well, they really were afraid of the Fujisake Onna. So much so, like in the first film, first movie, uh, they organized these, these. What are they called? Parent teacher association groupy things that. Uh, went along with the students so they wouldn't be taken. This really happened in real life. But to be fair, it's uh, might as well now it's uh, it can add protection from, from all sorts of other things as well. Of course, in real life, I doubt she, she actually you know, takes over uh, people who happen to be coughing. Uh, that's uh, yeah, that's something, isn't it? Um, that, that, that seriously added an extra dimension, you know. With a uh, respiratory disease around, uh, now, you know, in this pandemic, uh, whose uh, initial symptom is coughing, it's uh, it sort of added, you know, an extra scare element. I mean, not too much, ultimately. Uh, coughing is, is still, you know, there's a lot of symptoms that, you know, have this thing, you know. It's, I mean, you can cough if, if, if you exercise a bit, but a cough can also indicate more serious issues. It's just you know, one, one cannot really tell unless more develops. Anyway, I, I don't think so. I think I, I think I'm very safe in thinking that in real life, at least, coughing doesn't lead to the Kuchisaki on not taking over. Yeah. Or maybe it does, you know. Let's get into the spirit, I suppose. Why not? Yeah. Well. And so uh, I am going to watch the sequel or prequel. Sequel. But it does does say two, so technically a sequel. I mean if it was a prequel. To say mm, well either zero, apparently zero is another one found in the movie. The other one that uh, isn't listed here. Um Yeah. Or minus one I guess. I don't know. Do they ever use negative numbers in movies? I've, I've, I've never noticed that. It makes sort of some sense, though, doesn't it? I mean, if, if you're doing prequels and such, you know? Yeah, it's... Um, and actually, Zero makes sense more for present or something. 
Well, you know, you're indicating me this. Anyway, I'm going to begin this now. Yeah, yeah. The um, introduction there is. Uh, well, what might say disgusting, I guess, not to a. Uh, to, to a surgeon, but. Um, I mean, surgeon is a valid profession, but. Uh, he, they do have a, a gory. Uh, career, don't they? Uh, and uh, I don't know why anyone would well, it's a hard thing, so of course they, they, they use it as an introduction. But it makes me think this is going to be, you know, uh, less subtle than the first, which only reserved just a bit of gore for the end. Not really gore, more like violence, just violence. And uh, instead going uh, cops party direction which is which isn't really very good. I mean, I mean, I mean that those two there weren't any surgeons certainly. But there was still intestines and stuff and I don't know, I I I, I have to do this. I mean what's the what's the point? Well anyway. Let's see if it does go there or it's just the introduction. And uh also begins by saying that it's based on actual events. Wow, I had no idea. Kitchi an existed for real. Hmm. Well, unless that could, could be anyway, no one could be. You know, kind of like Jack the Ripper, I suppose. I mean, you know, people can uh, think that, uh, you know, it was a supernatural incident all they want. But, you know, just because they, they this case remains unsolved doesn't mean it's uh, supernatural. It just means it's unsolved. And we got a Sawada. I guess uh, Suna has a sister. Uh, Suna from the bar. Yeah, I always conflate all the th Japanese things I watch. Because that has nothing to do with this. That, that was not horror whatsoever. That was at best a comedy. Mostly a shonen. And anyway. Uh, I noticed this is much less focused than the previous one actually. I mean, it's around the same length, but uh, in the first four minutes at least, uh, they only talk soppy romance somehow in a, a movie about uh, a scissors wielding maniac. And, um, wow, I don't know if this is just coincidence, I'm assuming it is. Um, I think this was done much earlier as a movie anyway. Um, but this is such cause we're like seriously, uh, you know, I would probably wouldn't remember very well if uh, it was years ago that I watched uh, Cops Party, but it, you know, this is uh, obviously I'm not going to forget considering they keep, keep chanting her name. Ah, wow. So this is uh, a um, sort of unintentional um, uh, combination, you know, between two franchises, I suppose one might say. They even have the same number of movies. Well, just two, mainly. Well, this one, this one has done more, but, you know. Uh, yeah, as, as a legend, though, Kichi Onosaka actually has more than that as well. I think these two are directed by the same person, I think. I'm not sure. But, yeah. And then uh, maybe the other one, maybe well, not the others. Certainly not the others. There was one apparently before this, before the uh, original actually as well. Yeah. And uh, you know, even up to the eighth minute, I'm seriously wondering whether this is Kuchi Sake or not. Like what? So it uh, it began by being a soppy romance, and now it's continued a bit romantic as well, but also has has a. Uh, Comedic vibe to it, like seriously, Kuchisake Honda, the same film as the, as the previous one. Wow, I don't know when she's introduced or even mentioned. You, you, you know, the the original immediately went for it. it, it was relentless, it kept on going. That, that was pretty much the only topic, really. Well, that and uh, obviously, um, violence in general, and such, and it's. It's only up to the 13th minute where there's even a, an introduction of a scissors, you know? No mention of uh, Kuchi Sake, but uh, 
yeah, it's um, I'm just half expecting uh, the, 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 the wield of the scissors to start coughing or something. Yeah, it's just strange. I guess they, they went from different vantage points, which, which isn't bad, you know, it's, uh, it's bad than just, you know, copying the original. I'm just used to a lot of copies, I guess one might say, so, like, like, uh, Wonder's Call and Death Bellas, uh, and such, uh, the, the, you know, the sequels are generally copies. Yeah, this is supposed to be a prequel, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's they really went in a very different direction, you so far it's been... Like, um, you know, I mean, a political romance, which, uh, you know, I decided to watch yesterday was less romantic than this. Well, I mean, it was, a, it was a weird sort of, you know, Sundere type uh, romance anyway. And uh, this, on the other hand, uh, well, it's just a high school fling thing. There's some nice houses as well. And oh my goodness, that um, Watashi Kure was just mentioned. Now, I'm, I'm not someone who, you know, is up to date with every single uh, syllable of uh, Japanese. But <laughs> obviously, no one can miss this. From the previous movie, except it wasn't said by someone who was ugly. At all, and uh, well, in this context, it's, it's, it's like there's those elements of the previous movie, but they're separate, you know. In the sense, this was said by this soon to be married, uh, uh, Sachiko, yeah, ironically, she's not quite as, as, as young as Corpse Party's Sachiko, so, uh, yeah, and um, yeah, it's just certainly happy as well, I think. Ooh. So, uh, I don't know, I don't know, what, I, I can't predict how this will happen, honestly. Maybe someone will have another accident, and, um, she'll, uh, then, you know, this is a prequel, of course, so, it's just, I suppose I'll, we'll see the on uh, just appearing out of nowhere. This is supposed to be an introduction to how it has, although, the uh, original movie was supposed to have already uh, um, displayed what the process was. But I'm assuming, I don't know if this is based on a different sort of legend or, or if it's connected to it. I'll say, I suppose. So far, so good though. It's interesting. So far. Whole 16 minutes though, if there's barely any references, like this is the second reference, and, and then it's only a reference if, 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 if you watch the previous movie, so obviously, or you know the legend behind it. I wonder if they'll, um, they'll mention the um, possibility that uh, people might escape by telling her that she looks average. Yeah. Uh, I, I read that was possible one. That's kind of funny, isn't it? Except it wasn't mentioned at all in the previous movie. By the way, I don't quite understand how Japanese people evolve a culture where they sit on their legs instead of chairs. You know? Purely based on a, a cardiovascular perspective. I mean, whenever I try to sit on my legs, you know? at best, you know, um, it's not. 20 minutes or so before you start to get, you know, sensations and discomfort. So really, I don't know how, I mean, you know, chairs are useful to alleviate that. I mean, you can get discomfort uh, on chairs, uh, but only after a very long time. Sitting on one's legs, so... Uh, there's this, uh, some way that uh, I don't normally... Uh, yeah, some sort of configuration that uh, allows more blood flow, I suppose. I don't know, it's just, it's just some random idle thoughts, are mostly unrelated, really. Yeah. And on the 18th minute, we get what seems like an apparition. Which is a, a horror trope, generally. Not quite a trope that much existed in the previous movie, well, apart from, you know, the 
Fiona herself or the Fiona out of nowhere, but she wasn't part of an operation in this sense, you know, it's in the ghostly sense. She was more of a. Well, here we go, we have that pop up again. I cannot believe that nearly half an hour elapsed and three minutes, and there's still no mention. Just a couple of references, but no mention. Uh, and it, it's more of a shorter uh, story than horror so far. This is quite unexpected. Yeah. Um, and, um, well, the um, fingerless gloves were kind of funny. Yeah. Fingerless, totally, like just one big pocket or something. And uh, the the fact that they I don't know if they really give buttons to each other when they graduate that's that's a strange huh? Why would you want to say have see some view when you barely know her? I mean, why would you want to give her a button as well when you barely know her? Yeah. It's a it's a strange for a movie, that's for sure. Well what do you know? Yeah. Just 23 minutes, that's all. And that's why you really need to look in the direction of, I mean, you know, she was awake as well, why didn't she just, I mean, you know, if someone comes into your room, you just need to look, come on, man, that's the most obvious thing ever. Um... That's harsh, man. Sulfur, really? That's actually the same thing, the same substance, I think. It was thrown on uh, someone in uh, the corpse party sequel. I think it is, just. I think it is acid, just acid. Uh, yeah, I think I'm not sure. That's, um. Uh, I love God in the space of not even four minutes. Well, I mean, you know, God in the sense that, you know, it's, uh, yeah, self defense and all. And um, if he shot him before he did it, you know, he wouldn't have killed the mother either. That's very unfortunate. She, she only got acid thrown on her because she was in her sister's bed. And that wasn't an apparition. Apparently, yeah, I don't understand why strangers will spread rumors that uh, their mother was having an affair with her killer. When I mean, but you know, I mean, how would they explain uh, the asset attack then? Uh, you know, unless somehow they were having a threesome or something. Yeah, I mean, it makes no sense. Um, you know. And she's trying to stop them, I think. Yeah, anyway. Um, some people as well in my room. Yeah, it's a surprise. Uh, the acid didn't infect her, uh, most of her face, it seems, and her, like, usually the eyes. Uh, it often does in real life cases, and uh, the people go blind because of it. I mean, acid is such a powerful thing. But, and yeah, this kind of story only really works if nobody else wears face masks, you know, at least initially. Uh, which isn't the case, as far as I know, in in this country as well, usually, because of the smog. And so, I don't know, they make it seem like it's unusual to wear a face mask. Yeah. She's seriously trying to eat through it. Uh, it's such a hassle to, to take it off for every single intake. You know? It's a bit much, isn't it? I mean, she, I mean that's only her family anyway, so who cares about appearances? You know, um, it really says a lot that despite the house that they have and the view that can be seen just outside from where they were talking, you know, in the, the little shrine, that peace can still not be found, you know. Um, 
Yeah, this is difficult to come by. Hmm. Well, this film felt certainly more slow burning than the previous one. Much more so, it seems like. Um, you know, events, you know, specific incidents happen very slowly. Um, the sort of side click was the other one. It, the, 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 the really almost like two different movies. I mean, you know, I'm only connecting this one with the other one because of certain specific references, but not really. You know, if, if I watch this first, I wouldn't have any idea about Kuchi Sake Onna, clearly. Um, and I, you know, I went into this thinking that it will, you know, have a similar amount of violence and such. And again, the, the first one was on a status, and it's not like, you know, it wasn't, you know, it, it, it wasn't one missed call. But then neither is this, and this this has a more proper structure. I mean, it was... Uh, yeah, the, the the original was, well, it, it was specifically very much about the Kuchisake on, but this this one, you know, she's not even born yet, so I don't know if uh, she's going to do so soon, but she's not born right now. So, um, quite different styles and structures. Also, it's turning into a, a um, our little sister uh, sort of type you know, film, you know, uh, no, 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 that wasn't violent, but you know, it's, had, it's had some death as well, just not violent ones, uh, but uh, so some of the drama here at any rate does resemble that, you know, I mean, if, if it wasn't, you know, if this wasn't labeled Kuchiyama, so the, um, Apparitions that she's having are quite impactful, I think. Uh, yeah. Um, so I suppose they are sort of similar to what well, they seem to be actual apparitions as opposed to someone physical just appearing out of nowhere. In a way, kind of like uh, in, in the original film, uh, you know, the Kuchi Sake on uh, appearing out of nowhere. I mean, you know, Yes, you know, she she was sort of a, a spirit, but uh, she still seemed to be seemed to have a physical presence. So in that sense, not quite identical. Now, of course, with regards to the second movie, now uh, the audience still doesn't know uh, who and what this apparition is, unless it's uh, speculating here. It might be to the fire form that the Kuchiyona Sake, uh, Kuchi Sake on the verse, that it took before she became one herself. These sort of stories usually follow this sort of pattern. Uh, something originally and then sort of like, you know, uh, there's a, this evolution which follows. But so far, Nobody knows what it is yet, and it's all a speculation. I mean, if they wanted to delve into it again, if it was a serious search and they delved into who that person was, where this uh, other person appeared from, but no one knows where it's going with this. It's, it's nearly an, uh, this is nearly an hour in, and so we're past midway through the film, and uh, it's still not, it's it's just, you know, the apparitions are seemingly increasing, but other than that, there's, there's also only one side of the face that seemed to be, to have this cut that was stitched as well. So, based on seeing the original, one would assume that the stitches would come off somehow hopefully it's not it's not too gory uh, but um it also the other side will somehow also be uh, another somewhere else who will throw more acid or 
Maybe the scissors will be used this time. Do note the parallel though. She has taken up sewing as a hobby. So that is quite coincidental to her own sewn face. Truly a trope that only horror movies could contain. Yeah, under normal circumstances, sewing on its own is a mundane sort of thing, you know, as long as it's, uh, uh, as long as it's some sort of fiber that, you know, um, uh, clothes and such are sewn, but in this sense, clearly, there was more than just surgery. Well, stitches, I don't know if much of stitches are called surgery, but. I don't know, the, the doctors only mentioned the uh, bones being uh, operated upon, not so much the face, but clearly the face was as well, based on the little time that uh, she showed it so far at least, up to the 53rd minute. And yeah, this is uh, certainly slow burning. Uh, I can't believe, uh, so in, the, in the first movie, you know, uh, this, this legend was mentioned immediately. But suddenly, well, in the prequel, it's only it's only really started. Uh, you know, direct reference with the uh, scissors and such at the fifty-sixth minute mark. It is really late, more than midway through. Uh, yep. Yeah. So it's uh, quite something. Uh, in a way, I do, I do like the sort of, you know, yeah, not that the previous one wasn't sort of well proportioned as well, but they seem to be, so, you know, based on what the previous one did, obviously, all hell will break loose now in the last uh, one third or so. But it's quite something, the legend wasn't even mentioned uh, at all for, the, for nearly the first hour. Of course, that's how legends begin, I guess. They, they, they always have a point. If it's a movie that decides, you know, whether to approach the legend immediately or later on. The original film decided to do it immediately. But for the prequel, I guess, they decided to wait a bit. In, in a way, it, it, it uses symbols, in this, uh, primarily scissors. Uh, Effectively, really. So, you know, there's both scissors and uh, sewing, which mostly uh, mainly affected her face. Uh, well, scissors could also be used in sewing, I suppose, so in a sense. It makes sense. But, yeah, as it happens, her sisters uh, are her dresses, which obviously. Uh, use uh, scissors as the main uh, tool, so I suppose it can use so, so you know it can juxtapose these these symbols. So I think that makes this uh, interesting at the very least uh, movie, you know, for its type. Yeah, the the original didn't have as many parallels in a way. The original just had the Kuchisakiona and that's it. But yeah, this one, this one is even more interesting actually, which I didn't expect as such. And uh, took uh, one hour and three minutes for the second phrase to be uttered. Am I still pretty? Um, yeah, that's um, that's a slow burner, right? And the, the first phrase wasn't even uttered by her, uttered by the one who was going to marry. Now, you know, it's kind of strange because, you know, based after watching the previous film, you know, you'd think that someone's going to be attacked after either of these phrases are said, but that didn't happen. So I guess that's sort of like a subversion of expectations in a way. And this person spoke to Sue. Uh, happens. So yeah, this um, 
this was really um, a uh, for most of it, it wasn't. Uh, I mean, yeah, I thought the original wasn't very clever in the first place. You know, it uh, used different angles, camera work, and such to to, to hide it. And um, this was even less so. So didn't so much rely on camera work, but uh, it just worked until the very end. So yeah, the the, the ending is. Uh, quite gory, but it's, I think it's even less than one third of the movie. It's uh, and somehow they they do insist that it's based on uh, some actual incidents, and that somehow my my uni is still uh, could still be loose. That's uh, it's truly a horror movie for you. To think that you know, I mean, you know, at least it's psycho. We're not told. Yep, Norman Bates might still be around the corner. Because of course, the uh, fiction, even the the, the one that based on in real life, you know, that guy is well dead now. And uh, anyway, he was uh he was in jail, in jail even at that point. Anyway, um, so. This is uh, quite creepy, quite creepy, and the whole series of events is really is very much a slow burn, and it's um, you know for a slasher film, which turns out to be, it's you know it it has it has a good ratio of you know god drama in my opinion, you know. I'm assuming some people will just complain that oh it's not bloody enough for most of the movie. Well, you know this this is actually this is you know for, for you know, slashers will end up being gory inevitably. Then it depends on how proportional it is to the rest of the movie. Like you know, Psycho was um it did actually have a bit more blood than this it was you know slightly uh, but it, it it had a, it still had quite so i mean you know um it, it it was still proportioned in the manner that you know there was more drama than blood as opposed to Fe freddy krueger or such you know they, they, which is normally more blood than drama um or jason Voorhees. i mean there is a story but you know, now um, this for a slasher film is well proportioned, in my opinion. I mean, you know, I, I, I still don't like the excessive uh, violence at the end, but that's that's the point. I mean, you know, I, I'd rather have a horror movie that uh, relies on just creepiness, sort of like Dark Water, but. If you're going to do a slasher, then this these are around the right proportions, in my opinion. So that's um yeah. Yeah, the only way. and the way it develops, you know, the way that there's permanent permanent munitions and such, you know, this, all these setups, these symbols, the fact you know the, the hairdresser whose tool was scissors, you know. And yeah, it's it's ironic, isn't it? And um, in my opinion, this is even better, better than the original. The original was still uh, it's, it's, uh, it was still terrifying, and this is not so much you know terrifying until the end at least. But it was a slow burn. I mean, it was well in a way it's similar to Dark Water, except it, it does still have a bit of violence and gore at the end, which Dark Water didn't. In a way, it is. It is the definition of creepy, really. Like most of the film, for over an hour, it's the definition of creepy. And it makes you think it's a romance at one point, but then, you know, it's. Most of the film was awesome. And, um, uh, yeah, if you're going to be, have to have a slasher, you might as well go like this. It's. Um, I'm, uh, I'm impressed with this. Uh, we'll see, I guess, if you. 
the other one is like this is what it's supposed to be another one. I don't know. Let's see. Hmm.